In decentralized collective intelligence, what ends up happening is, is there's a signal to noise dynamic as things move through nodes. So if you receive something from a node, from, from me, for example, I'm telling you, this is actually, here we are. I'm telling you something. I'm telling you something. If you listen to what I'm saying and in yourself are able to find that part of what I am saying that feels true, feels, right? Does not kick off emotions of, you know, greed or uh, fight or flight or lust or whatever, but feels, there's a quality to it. And you've just, you've built that quality to a level of capacity where you're like, I don't understand exactly what is being said here. And most of it seems like it's kind of weird or noisy or cringeworthy, but there's a thread here that feels very strong. I'm going to separate that out. And now I'm going to skillfully express it back out. What you actually have now is a positive feedback loop filtering system. If every node is doing that, and by the way, let's do recursion. If every node is primarily focused initially on building its discernment and skillfulness in doing this process, right? Then what ends up happening is the network is fucking amazing at making sense of subtlety. Right? You can take the perception, these subtle, broad, implicit pattern recognizers that we're all so gifted with and grab very vague and weird, not quite knowing what's going on thing, put it into the system. And after a couple of turns, it's actually reified to a very crisp clarity that can be shared. Right? So that's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to accomplish is that process. And you notice how much of a burden is placed on the individual now. It's not like the broadcast modality where most of your agency is limited to a very narrow band and you're really relying on the causal structure that you're embedded in to do almost all the work. In the decentralized collective intelligence, for it to actually work, almost all of the agency is actually on the individuals. You have to have really, really effective, responsible individuals. Uh, and by responsible, what I mean is they're they are able to respond to the environment in the way that I'm talking about. They are not reacting. They are not shifting to a causal domain. They're not saying what they're supposed to say or rejecting because they're supposed to reject. They're listening and refining and doing the work of, of collaboration. Right? Think about collaboration, how collaboration works. You and I are collaborating on a song. Um, if we're partners, we're really collaborating. I'm gonna be like, oh man, I just had this crazy sense and I like play a terrible sound. But you're listening very closely, right? And you're good at it. You're good at listening very closely. And you're like, oh, you know what? I, is it like this? And you play it back. And what you play back is actually closer to what I'm feeling. I'm like, oh yes, more like that, more like that. And then I'm like, okay, and, and then this. But now I'm actually a little bit better at it because it's more clear in me because what you did was you refined it and expressed it back to me in a way that I couldn't perceive myself. But once I saw it, pop, that's insight. You just gave me an insight collaboratively, collaborative insight. So now I take it and I output something back to you. And now you're like, oh yeah, I totally get it. And then you drop into it. And now, boop, we're now a collective intelligence. Coherence is now happening in the fluid collaboration between us. And the things that can be produced are vastly more than what either one of us could have done separately. Now, of course, this requires that you have developed a certain level of discernment. I've developed a certain level of discernment. We're in a relationship that allows us to actually use that. And we can talk about what that means and what the requirements are. And then we've also built a certain level of skillfulness and expression so that I'm not creating noise and expressing it. I'm actually making it more signal when I express it, more real, more true. I'm increasing the truth of the, the expression of the quality. Um, so that's a pretty, like, I think, pretty concrete example that many people might be able to grasp. And the idea is that that's what we're doing. We're trying to figure out how to become real collaborators at scale. And but we're getting better at it. We're actually learning it. Like we're noticing, for example, that our most natural humanness has a lot of capability to separate bullshit from non-bullshit. Authenticity from artifice. And authenticity can at least feel true. It may not feel good. Artifice can do a really good job of feeling good, but, art, but authenticity can feel true, even when it's kind of a clusterfuck, right? even when it's not done exquisitely, particularly when it's hard. If it feels really true and authentic, there's something in there that your basic, like deep humanness is like, all right, I can work with that. Right, where do we go from here? 
And oh, by the way, I'm interested. And by the way, if there's openness, hey, you know, we're just figuring this out. I'm trying. What do you got? And you send it back to me symmetrically because we're available. And I listen. And I hear you. Then we've actually created a relationship that has that feeling of trust in the relationship, which then creates an open channel to do more of it. Now, of course, we're, late, we're rate limited. We're limited by our discernment. So we're always going to have to be doing work on improving the quality of our discernment in all the modalities that happen to be happening. And we are rate limited by our capacity to express. We have to get better and better at being able to express with clarity, with elegance, and with, what do I say, is fidelity meaning we don't want to put stuff in it that doesn't belong in it. Right? I want to say something that is also subtly manipulative. I just got to tell the truth. Pure truth. To the degree in which I can, I'm going to fuck it up. But at least I'm not fucking it up with stuff that doesn't need to be there at all. Right? So I'm just expressing it. And what happens about that is very good news. And it's an extremely powerful process. And the process of collaboration that's available now, because we're all connected to each other, um, is unprecedented. And that has the capacity to solve all the problems we're dealing with. That kind of a decentralized collective intelligence with high discerning individuals, with clearly expressing individuals who are non-egoically, meaning they are not adding subtly or intentionally their own shit into the signal, but are actually simply endeavoring to share what is authentically perceived by them to actually feel true, back out with quality, um, is incomprehensively capable of making sense and, by the way, making choices and doing things. Uh, so much so that it's sort of absurd that we just don't go there. You, know, you want flying cars and going to the stars, this will get you there. It'll solve everything. The amount of bandwidth that's available inside that domain is enormous. The problem, of course, is that it's hard at an individual level and it's countercurrent. Now, we've been trained for generations to do the exact opposite. We've been trained for many, 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 many generations to insert egoic content in between everything that we do. We've been trained for several generations to be simulating thinking, not thinking. And so we've got to relearn all that stuff. And we have to be doing it here first. Each individual has to be able to take the responsibility and then learn to trust their own discernment in relationship. You know, if I'm in relationship with you and you are in fact trying to manipulate me, I have to be in this really weird, widely vulnerable state of actually listening, but then noticing in myself that there's a feeling that's a little off, and then being able to respond to that as well. Ideally, to call it out. Ideally, there's a, a way for me to ex exquisitely invite you into a higher level of integrity in yourself and in relationship, but also perhaps sometimes just to be able to be able to make it safe for myself and for others. Um, so that's it. Like that's the practice. As far as I'm concerned. That is the thing that more or less everybody should be doing right now full time. And everybody who's good at it should be doing it more, like, it should show up. Like if, you're, if you are good at it, other people should be noticing that you're good at it. And one of the things that they should be doing is notice, sharing that fact so that the collective intelligence begins the process of being able to point its attention away from, say, simulation and artifice and towards truth and towards capacity building and growth as opposed to uh, exploitation and plunder. And by definition, if you're attending to people who are helping you build capacity, you're building capacity. Uh, so these people are going to do better. So it's actually a good choice for everyone. It is a better choice for everyone to be endeavoring to play this new game. And the more people who are playing it better, the more obvious that is, because the more actual visceral capacity is showing up over here. And there's a rate equation that's exponential, by the way, that once it starts to hit, it starts to achieve criticality, escape velocity, and just blows past this old structure very rapidly. Um, and so there we are, that metaphor of a four-year-old, where this is, uh, if you want to play basketball, you have an opportunity to draft LeBron James. He's four. It'll take a while before he's able to actually take you to the NBA championship, but the opportunity exists to have him on your team right now. By the way, and Michael Jordan. <laughs> they're all there. They're just on the playground. They're four. They're not that good right now, but in a little while, they're going to be amazing. And maybe even at 12, like if you imagine uh, five of the greatest NBA players of, of all time playing as 12-year-olds, might actually be a pretty freaking good team. Um, so it's kind of this, that's it. That's the story.